Welcome to The Extreme Underground, the show where I take a look at some of the most disturbing and controversial films in the world of cinema. Today we'll be talking about In a Glass Cage. Directed by Augusti Villaranga, this is one of those movies that pops up on a lot of disturbing lists and I haven't seen it before and I've only heard people talk about it but not anything specific and why it's disturbing. So I'm here to break it all down but first the loose synopsis, this movie's about a former Nazi child killer Klaus who tries to commit suicide, he fails and he's paralyzed from the neck down and kept in the iron lung which in this case is the glass cage. A young man is hired by his wife to care for him and he's slowly driven mad by the old man's past. Now let's break this down. This starts off by meeting Klaus. He was a Nazi doctor in World War II who would torture and abuse young boys. He's seen taking photos of a tied up boy before killing him with a wood plank. Unbeknownst to him, somebody was actually watching him as he did this. Who we'll later learn to be is Angelo. From Angelo's point of view, we see him walk in and steal like a journal. And we see Klaus try to commit suicide by falling off of a big tower. The titles now show some war crimes and old footage. And then we finally see the reveal of Klaus in his new iron lung. He's being taken care of by his wife Griselda and his daughter Rena in this big old castle type home. Griselda's grown to be just tired and sick of him and actually just wishes he would die so she can move on with her life and go travel. Angelo, an escaped victim, shows up and claims that he's a nurse so he can get closer to Klaus. He sits down with Griselda and she goes over exactly what he needs to do and she ends up hiring him. Finally alone with him, Angelo opens the iron lung, gets on top of Klaus and presses really hard on his chest so that he can't breathe. And then he sucks the remaining air out of his lungs before he starts crying and starts to make his way down Klaus's body. Nothing happens though. It cuts to the next day and Griselda realizes that Angelo is not a real nurse because he was instructed to give a needle to the housekeeper and he wasn't able to do so. Frustrated with this, she goes and tells Klaus and Klaus says, no, I want him to stick around because you can see that Klaus still has an appreciation for young boys. While she's leaving the room, she accidentally trips on the wire for the iron lung and she takes her sweet ass time as she contemplates just letting him die before she plugs it back in and then awkwardly kisses him on the eye. In the middle of the night, Griselda once again is contemplating killing her husband. So she goes and flips the breaker to trigger the power on the glass cage. She thinks twice about it and flicks the power back on. The next day, Rena and Angelo begin to bond. Rena starts to like Angelo and just thinks it's nice to have him around to play games with her so she's making a new friend. This is where Angelo starts to get even weirder though because he starts to read off the torture notes from that book that he stole to Klaus. And then he says, I can continue doing this for you. Like he wants to almost be him. At first you think like, why wouldn't he want to kill him? But he actually wants to be like him and start to kill children. It's really weird. And then he strips and starts to jerk off in front of him. Angelo and Griselda are not getting along because Griselda knows that he's up to something. So we have a little bit of a cat and mouse type of game with Angelo and Griselda until Angelo finally gets the upper hand and he ends up hanging Griselda and then putting her dead body on top of the iron lung face down so Claus has to see his dead wife and he says goodnight and then he goes and sleeps with his daughter. At this point he sends the housekeeper away. That way there's nobody else to bug him or interrupt what he wants to do. Uh, this is about an hour into the movie so we've kind of sped along. A lot of this movie is really slow paced. It's a very very slow build so I'm really just touching on key moments. After some narration of the torture, Angelo spirals a little bit further and starts to dress like Klaus in his old clothes. He goes down to their foyer and just starts burning a bunch of shit and creates this big fire in the middle of their house and then tells Rena that he's her father now. Angelo goes for a walk and relives one of the stories from the journal and brings a young boy home. Rena now is almost acting like his wife to some degree. It's a really weird relationship, but he basically just tells her to go collect some sea urchins. When she leaves, Angelo brings the boy upstairs to show Klaus what he's doing. He's like, hey, look, I'm doing what you were doing. And he makes the boy undress before strapping him down to a chair. He then takes some liquid or maybe some coolant or something, puts it into a needle and injects it into the boy's heart as he sits there and dies. This is probably one of the more disturbing scenes, even though it's not that graphic, it's just watching this kid convulse till he dies is kind of fucked. Angelo's completely lost it. He gets a bunch of chicken wire and he makes a big cage 
and he just puts chicken wire all over the walls. So this house is starting to look like a war bunker of some sort. He tells Klaus he's leaving. He goes and gets another boy from like a choir or something. He brings him home and he makes him sing. He lights a little fire, he strips him, and then he cuts the boy's throat. This whole time, Rena was locked in her room. She escapes to go visit her father, her real father, not Angelo like he suggested he was. And Klaus tells her like, you need to write a letter for the housekeeper to inform the grandparents of what's going on here because they know that Angelo is out of his mind. He's killing people left and right. Uh, they need to deal with this. Unfortunately, Rena is caught by Angelo as she's going to deliver the letter. What's weird about this is we now have a big reveal of what actually happened to Angelo as if this was some kind of big twist, but it seemed very evident that he was an escaped victim. So I've been referring to him as that because you know right out the gate what has happened. They talk about this story a couple times about an old man offering a child a cigarette. And now we actually go and revisit this past trauma in a visualization where Angelo was abused as a kid. Angelo takes Klaus out of the iron lung and he's struggling to breathe. He makes Klaus suck his dick like he had to. And that's how Klaus dies with Angelo's dick in his mouth. At this point, Rena escapes and Angelo fakes a letter about the bodies in the house so that Angelo's name would be clear. And Rena comes home and finds Angelo now in the glass cage, in the iron lung himself. Again, he was trying to recreate the life of Klaus all the way up until his final moments. So as he lays in the glass cage, Rena thanks him, straddles it, and begins to strip. There's a freeze frame and the credits roll. Now, while I can understand why a lot of people would find this disturbing, I didn't really feel the same way as a lot of other people. It's a well done and well shot movie and the way that the story plays out is pretty good, but it is so slow. And I think the biggest problem is that the reveal isn't much of a reveal because you know exactly what's happening. You know that Angelo was abused as a kid and he's come back. So to try and present this like it's some grand twist just doesn't make any sense to me. I did like the acting and I thought that was really well done. And I think the way that Klaus communicated with Angelo was pretty interesting. And it was cool to see Angelo kind of descend into this really, really dark place, trying to replicate what his abuser had done to him to try and get into his mental state and maybe try to understand it. Uh, you can't quite tell. And I think that's part of the beauty of this is there's no rhyme or reason for what Angelo is doing aside from him having a traumatizing past that's obviously broken him over the years and he's finally living out what he wanted to do. And maybe when he came to this house initially, maybe he was just gonna try and kill him, but as he started to go through the journals once again, he just got enveloped in this darkness. So that's what's cool about this movie, and I think it is worth watching just so you know, because a lot of people do talk about this. The one person that I've ever met in real life based on the Extreme Underground series was at a local store, and this was her request. She's like, I love your Extreme Underground stuff. Can you do In a Glass Cage? And I told her, yeah, but that was like three years ago and I forgot about it. So I apologize if you're still watching. And that's when this series was over on my other channel. And so I don't even know if she's found this channel yet. But back to the movie, there are a lot of great elements, but I did feel it was a little bit too dull. Not only is it slow, but like the setting is very old school. I didn't really like the color grading because it's really, really dark and just blue. So it's like this cold feeling. Obviously this was intentional, but I didn't really enjoy it. And when it's a one location movie like this, you kind of want to enjoy the setting to some degree. Again, it's not the worst, it's not the best. So I'm gonna give this two and a half cigarettes out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. If you have any, you do want to check it out. Links are in the description. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, stay up to date with everything here on the Extreme Underground.